Apoptosis, also known as programmed cell death, is a process that takes place not only in the cells of our own body, but also in the cells of other organisms as well. Now, what exactly is apoptosis? Why does apoptosis actually take place? And how does apoptosis actually take place? These are the questions we're going to address in this lecture. And let's begin with the what. So what exactly is apoptosis? Well, it's a process, a natural process, that takes place inside our own cells. And if the cell actually commits to apoptosis, what it does is it will follow a series of reactions that will eventually kill that cell off. So in a way, apoptosis is cell suicide. Now, the next question is, why in the world would a cell actually want to kill itself off? Why would a cell want to commit suicide? Well, one of two reasons. As it turns out, apoptosis is a normal process during embryological development and it's also a normal process during the development of our immune system. So what exactly do we mean? Well, when the embryo is developing inside the uterus of the mother to actually form the fingers on the hand and the toes on the feet, apoptosis must take place naturally between, this, between the regions on the fingers to actually form the fingers. So the reason we go from this to this is because of apoptosis that takes place during normal embryological development. Now, what about development of our immune system? Well, remember T cells, also known as T lymphocytes, mature and develop inside the thymus. So what happens inside the thymus, which is an organ found in this section of the body, inside the thymus, those T lymphocytes are tested against self antigens. Remember self antigens are proteins found on the healthy cells of our body. And if those T lymphocytes bind onto these healthy self antigens, then the binding process will initiate apoptosis and those T cells will be killed off. The reason is, if the T cells actually bind onto self antigens, that means those T lymphocytes will begin to kill off the healthy cells of our body. And we don't want this. We don't want to cause a condition known as autoimmunity. And so what happens in the thymus, we eliminate those T cells, these immunologically insufficient T cells, by the process of apoptosis. So we see that apoptosis is a normal process that takes place in development of the organs and systems and the structures of our body. Now, reason number two is basically to prevent from that cell harming other cells of our body. So, to destroy dangerous agents that can harm the healthy cells of our body. For example, cancer cells, infected cells, or any type of damaged cell will undergo apoptosis to kill itself off. So, this is why. What about how? How does apoptosis actually take place? Well, there are three very common mechanisms by which apoptosis takes place. Mechanism number one is called the intrinsic pathway. Mechanism number two is called the extrinsic pathway. And mechanism number three involves a molecule known as apoptosis inducing factor or AIF. So let's begin with the intrinsic pathway. So in this mechanism, the process of cell death initiates inside the cell itself. In fact, it initiates inside the mitochondria as we'll see in just a moment. So, let's suppose the cell is damaged in some way or form because remember, a damaged cell will undergo apoptosis. So, if the cell is damaged, what happens is the following takes place. So let's suppose we're inside the mitochondria. This is the outer membrane of the mitochondria. This is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. Along the inner membrane, we have these proteins known as cytochrome C, which are shown in red. 
blood. And on the outer membrane of the mitochondria in healthy cells, we have a special type of protein known as BCL2. Now, BCL2, what it does is it basically inhibits the process of apoptosis from actually taking place. But if the cell is damaged in some way or form, what happens is another type of protein is produced and released. And this protein is known as BAX, B-A-X, shown in purple. So what happens is once the cell is actually damaged, back, uh, BAX moves on onto the cell membrane of the mitochondria and attaches next to this BCL2 protein. Now what BAX does is it prevents the BCL2 protein from inhibiting apoptosis and BAX also punctures the membrane of the mitochondria. So it creates holes inside the outer membrane and what happens is once the holes are created, cytochrome C detaches from the membrane of the inner mitochondria and moves to the outside of that mitochondria into the cytoplasm. Now, once inside the cytoplasm, so these are the cytochrome C molecules, the cytochrome C attaches to another type of protein known as APAF1. And once they attach, they form a special structure known as apoptosome. Now, what apoptosome does is it basically goes on and activates a special type of protease protein known as caspase 9. And by activating caspase caspase 9, we form a complex known as the active caspase 9 complex. And what this complex does is it moves around the organelles of our bot of uh, the organelles of that cell and they break down those organelles and eventually they break down the DNA inside that cell and that causes the death of that cell. And once the cell actually dies off, some type of phagocytic cell, for example, a macrophage, swims by and engulfs that cell. And so this is one mechanism by which this process of apoptosis takes place and involves this special type of active protein known as caspase 9. Now this entire process takes place inside that cell. It initiates and takes place inside the cell. What about the extrinsic pathway? Well, the major difference between the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway is the origin in the extrinsic pathway is outside of the cell. So in this mechanism, the signal molecules are originating outside of the cell and they stimulate that that cell to commit suicide inside that cell. So it begins on the outside, but then it takes place, apoptosis takes place on the inside. So healthy cells contain special integral membrane proteins known as DEF receptors and that can bind complementary molecules known as DEF activators. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following molecules. So let's suppose this blue cell is our infected cell and that infected cell has a special membrane protein known as the DEF receptor and this is some other type of cell. Let's suppose it's some type of immune cell, for example, the cytotoxic T cell. Now, the cytotoxic T cell has a special membrane protein known as the death activator. And so what happens is when they actually bind on the outside, that will initiate some type of internal process that will activate a caspase protein. But this caspase protein is slightly different than caspase 9. We call it caspase 8 but it's still a protease and what that means is once we activate the caspase 9 inside the cell that caspase uh, I'm sorry caspase 8 once we activate the caspase 8 it will go on to basically destroy the organelles and the structures inside the cell as well as the DNA inside the nucleus of that cell and that will eventually lead to the death of that cell and once the cell dies once again a macrophage or another phagocytic cell can swim by engulf that dead cell and that will prevent that infected cell from actually destroying other healthy cells of our body.
Now, what about the final mechanism? So, notice in the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway, we both used a category of protease proteins known as caspase. The major difference between the final mechanism and these two mechanisms is that this does not actually include a caspase protein. It includes its own molecule known as apoptosis inducing factor or AIF. So, the final mechanism of apoptosis involves using apoptosis inducing factor AIF to actually initiate the process of apoptosis. This process does not use caspases. So what exactly happens? Well, AIF basically is located inside the intermembrane space between the two membranes of the mitochondria. And if the cell is actually damaged in some way, what happens is this AIF molecule is released from the mitochondria, it travels into the cytoplasm, and then it moves into the nucleus of that cell, it binds onto the DNA of that cell, and ultimately destroys that DNA, and that causes the death of that cell. So ultimately, this is basically done by cells such as neurons. So nerve cells in our body can commit apoptosis via this process by using the apoptosis-inducing factor. So these are the three common methods by which our cells can naturally commit cell suicide, a process known as apoptosis.